The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Reels Puppet in the game. And we're taking a closer look at 10 Fab Filter Pro L2 secrets that nobody tells you. So the very first thing that I love to do every time when I use FabFilter Pro L, your streaming LUFS loudness readout. Seeing your attenuation and final decibel loudness is helpful, but when you plan on posting that song on Spotify, you gotta know where you are in terms of their built-in limiter, because you have to understand that Spotify is now the final limiter in your mix, and you need to mix accordingly. It allows you to have different limits. Here we have our zero dB limit, Limit. We have our CD audio volume limit, which is basically if you were to print your song to play on a CDJ, you'd print it at this volume. If you were to print it for Spotify or streaming, you'd print it for this volume. And as you can see, I just changed momentary to short term, which gives you slightly slower readouts, and integrated will give you a loudness readout average. So right around there is where I would want to be for my Spotify upload. Now the next thing I love is another thing that doesn't change the way your sound actually sounds, but it does change how you see it and how you perceive it, and that is the waveform that scrolls by. And you now have three different options as to how slow or fast your song goes by. And while we're down in this corner, the next feature that I really love is true peak metering, which gives you a more realistic sense of what the sound would be like coming out of the speaker. And there's also true peak limiting, which ensures that the signal getting sent out of the speaker won't exceed that volume too. And that brings us down to this corner where we have our advanced menu. The first thing I like to adjust inside this advanced menu is your limiting style. These are different characters, different flavors of limiting. And to help you better understand that, let's just play the song and switch between them. My favorite is Modern. It's a great all around for any style of music that you want to maintain the punch and get it loud. Modern is going to work quite nicely for you. I also do like Dynamic quite a bit. And a really cool new feature that they gave you to really understand the difference is this new uh, solo button that they have here. So you can hear what the limiter is actually doing. So this kind of spastic crackly sound that you're hearing is what the limiter is actually adding to your mix as it reduces the volume to hide the fact 
that it's reducing the volume. Do your 808s sound like floppy trash? Are you tired of boring bass lines that just don't hit right? Introducing Disrespectful 808s, the all new collection of 808 bass samples so disrespectful you might just get offended too. Disrespectful 808s is available now only at holoops.com. The next control we have here is look ahead time. Now I like to keep my look ahead time at a really low amount because I find it sounds a little bit louder, but if you want your limiting to be a little bit smoother and control sudden peaks a little bit better, you might have better luck pushing the look ahead time up. I've always found it to be more punchy, but slightly more aggressive with the harmonics that it adds to make up for it when you push this down. So really the default position tends to be my favorite place to keep it. The next we have the attack and release of the limiter and this controls how reactive it is to the peaks and how quickly it reacts and also how quickly it returns back to a normal spot. I usually like to put the attack and the release up at about the same amount. I find the default attack position is just a little bit quick, so to preserve my transients, I usually just find myself boosting this up and not really touching this much, usually doubling what the default preset is. Next we have channel linking. This will take the loud information and push it towards the center, or it will take the stereo information and keep it loud. I tend to hear a lot more of the mono drums when I have this all the way up and a lot more of the drums on the outside when I have this all the way out. And not just the drums, but the transients on anything. I prefer to keep this, again, around the default position. It was there for a reason, so just below 100% is perfect for me. The next thing that I find really handy is as you push up the gain meter, if you hold the option key, you can have it do sort of an auto gain by reducing the volume for you. Now this isn't a new trick, this is a pretty old one, but what is pretty new is the option to do this auto gain. Now what this is doing is making sure that as you increase it, there's absolutely no difference in volume as you limit it. This is a difference in perceived volume, whereas just holding the alt trick is just literally doing whatever the number is here, doing the same number here. Finally, we have an option here called oversampling, and they used to just give you two and four X, but now they've increased it to eight and 16 X. What this does is reduce how noticeable the artifacts are that we listen to when we hit this audition limiting button but it also uses a ton more CPU. I find oversampling off sounds a little bit more crisp to me, but if you were again trying to hide the fact that you were using a limiter instead of use it to add aggression to your song, oversampling might be a great option for you. Thank you so much for checking out all my FabFilter Pro L2 secrets, and I'll catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out.